We are going today to do an overview of uh, RPD chrome cobalt procedure. We are trying to combine in this demonstration the steps done inside the clinic and in the lab. So if you can see the demonstration here, we have divided it into three regions. This region will be talking about the dental clinical procedures. This region will be concentrating on the delivery and what is going to be delivered from the clinic to the dental lab. And the procedures that will be described here will be done by the dental technician. So this is the area of authorization for the dentist and this is the area where the dental technician will be working. So if we begin at clinic number one, the dentist has decided that this patient is suitable for a Crohn cobalt RPD. Remind you that Crohn cobalt is a definitive treatment, meaning that the patient should have finished all of the procedures before it, stabilizing his oral health, removing teeth that should be extracted, treating his periodontal diseases if he has any, and treating active dental caries. So Crohn cobalt is a definitive procedure. So all of the dental procedures prior to that are not counted here. We are talking about clinic number one of the actual RPD procedure. So the patient is ready. We do, we select our trays and we then take impressions. We're going to take upper and lower impressions. These are usually done with a tray and alginate because this is a dentate patient. And this together, the upper and lower impressions are delivered to the lab with instructions to pour them. So in the dental lab, the dental technician will receive this disinfect it. If it was not disinfected in the clinic, then begin the pouring process. And I remind you that primary casts are poured using plaster. The pouring process will result in two casts, upper and lower primary casts. These primary casts will be a also called study cast because on them we study our design. Where am I going to place the teeth? What am I going to place the components of the crown cobalt that you have taken in your lectures? So I have to study this well. Studying it by vision will be not be sufficient because I could not see if there is an undercut and how much is it. I could not gauge it by vision. I need something more specific. For this purpose, I use what we call a dental surveyor. You will take the process of surveying in detail in the next demo. This instrument is used for recording and trying to analyze all of the components of RPD. Once we finish the surveying, we will have some lines drawn on the cast. Mainly the survey line, we would have found undercuts suitable for our design. We complete the drawing trying to draw other components of the design until we reach to this design which has all of the components drawn on the cast. As a student, you should take an approval for this design from your supervisor. And the dental technician will also provide with this uh, special trays to take impressions. These two go back to the clinic, cast with their special trays, and now we begin a process called tooth preparation. I would like to remind you that the natural tooth form is smooth and continuous, but it does not have places to place a specific guide plane or rests. So we do tooth preparation to make the shape of the tooth accommodate components as guide planes and rests. After tooth preparation are done and your supervisor approved these alterations of the two teeth, a secondary impression is taken. Remind you also, I'd like to remind you that we remove the spacer before we're taking the secondary impression. After we take the secondary impression, we have the final special tray with the impression material inside. We also do, do a bite registration procedure. And all of these are sent back to the lab with an authorization form a drawing the de final design that has been approved by the supervisor and telling the technician where to place all of the components. This secondary impression is poured 
using stone, the technician will then have the secondary cast ready. He is going to draw the final survey exactly as present in the authorization form. So the technician will do a block out of the secondary cast. The block out procedure will be described in further detail later. But the idea is to prepare the cast in a way that would follow the principles of metal framework design. So we need to do what we call a duplication. This is the secondary cast with the block out material on it. And we need to place metal over it. So this material does not stand metal. Stone does not stand the temperature of the casting machine. So we need to use another material. We need to use another material that could stand the temperature of this process. And it's called refractory material. So how do I change this to this? I need a process called duplication. By duplication, what do I do? I simply take out the cast, put it inside this flask, and close it, and then pour over it a duplication uh, material. This material is usually made of agar or silicon. Silicon is more accurate. Silicon comes in two containers as in a liquid form. The material from these containers are mixed according to the manufacturer instruction. And once they are mixed, they are poured inside the flask. Once we it's set, we will get this where the cast is present. And we take it out. And we will have this mold, this empty mold. This empty mold now is ready to be used as a form for pouring in the refractory material. The refractory material is another material, powder and liquid mixed together. When, once we pour it inside here, we will get these refractory casts. The main property of the refractory material that it withstands high temperature and it will compensate for the expansion on and contraction of metal during the cooling process. Please review your dental material lectures and read your dental material chapters about refractory material. After finishing the constructing the refractory cast, now they are ready for the step we call wax up. The wax up is done using wax patterns. These wax patterns come ready and they are in the same shape that we want our final metal framework to have. As you could see, they come in colors, they diff have different shapes, but if I look at them, they closely, they have specific measurements that I need to incorporate in my metal framework. These wax patterns are then transformed into metal using the process of casting. It's a, it's a process that contains multiple steps, so let us take them one by one. This metal framework is then attached to what we call sprues. This, these sprues later on will be attached to a funnel. These are extra components essential for the casting process. This finished wax up with the sprueing on and the funnel is placed in what we call a, an investment ring. Inside this investment ring, I am going to do another pour, but this time I'm going to use investment material. This is the powder, and it could have a spe special liquid to it, or water, depending on the manufacturing instructions. These are mixed, and once we have the wet mix there ready, we pour it around the material. If I take this out and after it sets, take a cross-section of it. If I open it, these are the layers inside. You could see the funnel that we placed at the last step of the wax up, the sprues, and the metal framework there, and we could also see the refractory cast inside. This is ready to do a step after it called burnout. 
because all of these all of these spaces are filled with wax. We don't want them filled with wax. We want this wax to go out. So we do a process of burnout, where this is placed in an oven at high temperature. The oven will melt down all of the wax. And what we will have at the end, we will have this investment material with empty tunnels that follow exactly the same shape that we had in wax. These empty tunnels, this part is exactly resembling the, the funnel. These empty tunnels at the beginning are the exact duplication of the sprues. And later on inside, you will have empty spaces where the metal framework wax up was done. Now, this is ready to go to the casting machine. There is a place in the casting machine where this is placed and heated. In the casting machine, it is placed and another part of this casting machine, we have the crucible. This will take the metal ingots in. These are the ingots of chrome cobalt material. They come in different shapes. This is one of these shapes. It is placed in this crucible and heated until it's molten. If you can look inside, as you see, this crucible has the metal still solid. Once heated to the temperature, uh, specific for chrome cobalt melting, it becomes liquid, and there a process of centrifugation, fast rotation, will take out this liquid from inside the crucible. You could follow the green color inside. It will go out this opening and go through a hot a tunnel into the heated, already heated investment ring. The metal will go follow the tunnel inside into the empty spaces, and it under force will go and flow into all of the empty spaces that were created by the funnel, the sprues, and the metal framework uh, pa wax pattern. So after, after pouring the metal, it's taken out the casting machine and left to cool. And what I get now is metal inside this investment ring. So if I take the cross section of this, it will be this exact shape, but all of these are now replaced by metal. These are all in metal. After finishing the casting process, I began using a hammer to fracture off investment material. The, one of the properties of investment material that they have low impact force, so they can easily be broken. I break them down. I begin breaking off all of the layers. You will, can get, you can harvest now the metal with some investment material still around. This metal is further cleaned by hammering and then you will get fine particles of investment. These are also cleaned by a process called sandblasting. And finally, I get the metal framework that was embedded inside this investment material, now free from all investment material. So see how the metal took the shape of the funnel, the sprues, and the metal framework that was made previously in wax. To finish this off, remember that these are not components that I'm going to place inside the patient's mouth, so we need to cut them off. We begin by cutting by specific desks. We begin cutting them. After cutting, we begin finishing them until they become totally smooth. And the metal is polished. This metal framework is now ready to go to the clinic. So the dentist receives this metal framework and puts it inside the patient's mouth and tries it in, then takes a bite. The bite registration tells us where to place the occlusal plane of teeth that we're going to select. I remind you, I would like to remind you, with the bite registration you have done in complete denture, because in the case of free and saddle, this is very similar. So we do the wax blocks according to the instructions you have ta taken in the, your lab. We are going to do the same clinical steps that we're going to do in the clinic. But for the bounded saddle area, we simply place a, a block of wax and tell the patient to bite on it. This is called bite record. 
We also select the shade for the teeth we intend to use. So we do a shade selection. We write down the authorization form containing all of the information about the teeth that we would like to choose, their shape, their shade, their size. And this is all sent back to the lab, authorizing them to finish off the acrylic. In lab three, we will have received these, and the technician will take these metal framework, for example, and using our record, we'll begin placing teeth. Once the teeth are in, in there, now we call that a metal tri denture. It has the wax teeth and the acrylic. These are the acrylic teeth that will be in your denture later on. These are ready now to be sent back to the clinic. And the doctor has the denture there, partial denture there. He places it, places it inside the patient's mouth. He tries it in. He makes sure the wax shape is suitable for the patient. He makes sure that all of the components of the RPD are engaging in their place. Make sure the occlusion is correct. The boundaries of your RPD are all correct. And sends them back with an authorization to do and complete the acryl. The wax is replaced into acryl using the same process you used in complete dentures, which is the flasking, then de-waxing, then packing, and finishing of acryl. After packing and uh, curing the acryl, once we take it out of the flask, we take, after deflasking, we will find that the acryl is rough. You will have some edges. These all should be finished. And the final acrylic RPD, after finishing and polishing, making sure all of its extensions blend smoothly inside and outside with the metal. These are sent back now to clinic number five, where the dentist is ready to deliver this RPD. And I hope your patient goes out happily, and they might come in later on for a recall visit if they ha have any complaints to be treated uh, on the spot, similar to complete denture procedure. Thank you.